Well, I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ as we gather in this holy place for worship and for prayer and for praise. Are there any announcements this morning? Any announcements? I do want to share with you that I know we uh, are praying for our dear brother Phil Brees. He is home from the hospital and so just continue to hold Phil uh, in your prayers and hearts uh, on this day as well as all of those that are listed in your bulletin under prayer concerns. I encourage you to continue to pray for them each and every day as we go in this world. Any, any other, any other last-minute announcements? Amen. Amen. All right, friends. Well, friends, as we gather in this holy place, we gather in the presence of Christ. I want to invite you to stand as you are able as we begin worship with hymn 479, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. You may be seated. I invite you to join with me, my friends. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You feed the hungry and clothe the naked. You set free those who are bound. You raise up those whose courage falters. You provide for our every need. You have called us from all peoples. You bless your people with peace. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. Let us join together in our Apostles' Creed. God has made us his people through baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, pour out upon us the Spirit to think and do what is right, that we who cannot even exist without you may have the strength to live according to your will. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite the children to come and join with me. How are you ladies doing? Good. Well, good morning. How are you? Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, you guys know what today is, right? It is Sunday. Very good. You're very perceptive. What else is today? Yes. You're packing up today to go on vacation. Where are you going? Um, tomorrow we're going to head to Haiti. Haiti. You're going to go to a beach house. Yeah. It, it, are all of us going with you? Are we all, do we all get to go? No. Uh-huh. Just grandma and grandpa. Oh. Uh-huh. So just your family, not, not any of them. They don't get to go along? Oh, oh, Aaron's not allowed to go. Sorry, Aaron, you don't get to go. Well, today is, we have these, 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 don't we? We got to make noise today, don't we? Yeah, that's exciting. Now, do you know what today we're going to, that's right, noise, the offering, very good. And you know what the money's going to go towards? It's going to go to Jesus Builds. And do you know what that is? What is that? Well, we do give thanks to God for it, yeah. Oh, we give the money to God. Yeah, we do give it to God. And then God has us go into Henry and Putnam Counties and help families. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we could do that with it too. And so we're going to help families in our community, aren't we? And that's what this money goes for, is to help each other in our neighborhoods. Huh? Whether, whether they're... Oh, you did pack a whole bag of money. Excellent, Grandpa. Is Grandpa did it? Was it Grandpa that brought the money or Grandma? Oh, Oh, you brought it. Oh, you brought it. Okay. Grandma and Grandpa didn't bring any. Shame on them, huh? That's right. <laughs> oh, they're going to use your money. That was nice of you to share. Why don't you come get one of these? We'll give you guys some big ones here. There you go. Oh, you want the top one. Okay. Okay. There you go. There you go.
first lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have destroyed my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up the shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. Here ends the reading. The second lesson is from Colossians chapter 4. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us as well that God will open to us a door for the word, that we may declare the mystery of Christ, for which I am in prison, so that I may reveal it clearly as I should. Conduct yourselves wisely towards outsiders, making the most of that time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, so that you may know we are, how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, the faithful and beloved brother who is one of you. They will tell you about everything here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, greets you. These are the only ones of the circumcision among my co-workers for the kingdom of God and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you. He is always wrestling in his prayers on your behalf so that you may stand mature and fully assured in everything that God wills. For I testify for him that he who has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea in Hierapolis, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it read also in the church of the Laodiceans and see that you read also the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, see that you have complete the task that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains, grace be with you. Here ends the reading.
invite you now, friends, to stand as you're able for the hearing of the gospel lesson. This morning from the gospel of St. Mark in the sixth chapter, hear these words. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, and they came to land at Gerza and mourned the boat, When they got out of the boat and people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. This is the reading of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We heard in the second reading today the end of Paul's letter to the church of Colossae. And in it, Paul touches on a very important piece of our faith life. That as believers, we are centered on prayer. Prayer being an essential part of everyday life for each and every one of us. And the truth is, for many of us, we have great intentions in our prayer life. We have the intentions to pray each and every day. Regardless of circumstance, regardless of what is happening in life, our intention is to pray every day. Yet the reality is for some of us, the busyness of life, the distractions of the world get in the way. And our prayer life as so desirable we want becomes secondary. And for some of us, our prayer life only kicks into gear when the walls seem to be falling around us, when darkness seems to be creeping in, when it seems that no matter what is going on, it just seems like nothing is going right. Or we are so consumed with the fear of not knowing what to say we decide not to say anything at all. And the truth is that is not isolated to one particular group. That's not isolated to those that are just new to the faith. That's not isolated to just those that have been around the faith and only the the strong can pray well, only the ones with the big long words, only those that have been to seminary can pray. A comedian once spoke of how he struggled with prayer life. And he ended up in a church and the, and the pastor said to the congregation, I need you to go pray with your neighbor. And the poor man thought to himself, why would I call my neighbor? He doesn't go to church. Do you know how weird that would be? I don't even know his name. And then he realized the pastor was actually asking him to pray with the person sitting next to him. And he got more worried because he knew that that sister had been in church her entire life and she was in her 80s and he knew she knew every long religious word possible and so he got up to leave and she grabbed his hand and made him sit and she started to pray oh heavenly father bless you for this beautiful glorious day that you have blessed us all and she went on and on and he said I never sweated so much in church in my life but then he thought to himself I shall not be outdone and so he started to pray and he prayed the only thing that came to mind was commercials he said dear God I don't know where the beef is today but you shall show me where it is Lord I know, I know Jiffy can be smooth, but if you could just smooth out my problems for me. And he just went on and on about this. 
And the truth is, for a lot of us, at times, we are unsure what to pray. Or we'll hear someone pray and we'll think to myself, wow, they are so beautiful when they pray. It just touches my heart. Could they just follow me around every day and pray for me? But that's not what God calls us to do. And Paul, in this chapter of Colossians, gives us all a guidance. Gives us really three main steps on which and how to pray every day. He opens up in verse 2 and he says, devote yourselves in prayer. This word devote actually means be persistent, never faltering, never stopping. Be persistent, or maybe another way to say it is keep on praying. Don't bail, don't give up. Be committed to pray every day, whether it's in dry times, whether it's in dark times, or whether it's in times when things are all going smoothly and it just is like life is perfect. Paul says, be devoted to your prayer life because in your prayer life is a time in which you will and may grow closer to God, to your heavenly Father, each and every day. The Gospel of Luke, Jesus tells of a parable. He says that a a man went to a friend's house late in the evening to borrow a loaf of bread and he said to him a friend of mine has arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat and suppose he calls out from his bedroom don't bother me the door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed I cannot help you but I tell you this though he won't do it for friendship's sake keep on knocking keep on knocking and he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence Now, don't misunderstand what Jesus is saying. He's not saying continue to knock on God's heart because if you're persistent enough, God will just get up and be grumpy and give you what you need. But he's saying God is complete opposite of this. God is a loving God. So keep on asking and you will receive. Keep on seeking and you shall find. Keep on knocking and the door shall be opened for you. Believe it or not, God is desires to hear from each and every one of us every day and so we must be persistent not just seeking answers for our prayers but to continue having that moment every day no excuses Paul says be persistent and this is not something that Paul only alludes to here in Colossians it is throughout scriptures we hear over and over again Jesus himself would go away to pray to talk with his father, to talk with God in heaven. We must not falter this. And then Paul steps in and he says, and keep alert. Be perceptive in your prayer. Be aware of what is in need in your life and in the lives around you. Be aware of what is happening each and every moment of every day. Because you might think you don't need prayer. And the truth is, you do. You might think that Errol is well with your neighbors, but there is a need for prayer. You might think that the community is doing wonderful, but I guarantee you there's a need for prayer. You might think the nation is doing better and better, but I guarantee you there is a need for prayer. And the same goes for the world. But it's not just where there is need we must finally Paul says be thankful because sometimes we might not see we might miss the need but boy we can see the blessings because they're always there because God is always at work in the world isn't he and so we must remain both in persistence and devoted to prayer we must be alert to what is happening and we must be thankful Paul says in our prayers giving praise to our Heavenly Father. The crops need more rain. Well, of course, not now. But we are thankful for the rain. But we are thankful for the farmers. We are thankful for our schools. But we pray for our teachers. There is always blessings There's always needs all around us. 
There is those that are near you that will and always, as I've said, watch. Paul then will jump a little bit more and he'll say, and all of this, he says, is so that a door is open for God's word to be in the hearts of the world. When we pray, Paul alludes to, our hearts are open more intimately, more powerfully to our Heavenly Father. And God's word in which we give thanks to God for begins to come into our hearts, begins to transform us. And the mystery of Christ begins to unfold, begins to be revealed more clearly than it was. And then there are those on the outside who will see you, who will see how each and every one of us walk in this world. And they will see that in dark times they know you pray. And in moments of joy they will know that you pray. And what will happen, and I can tell you, it is beautiful. Because prayer gets through, gives us courage, shows us a path to walk. Many times in ministry, I've had the blessing to pray with so many brothers and sisters, to give thanks to God for his presence in their lives, to celebrate what is going on, to acknowledge that there is pain and suffering or struggle. And I have seen it work over and over and over again. I've had many, many folks tell me, wow, pastor, you just pray so beautifully. And I remind them that they do as well. Because it's not the words that we say, but it's our hearts that are open. It's our hearts that acknowledge that our God is our God and that he is listening every day. He is listening for our voices. He desires for us to be in a deeper relationship with him. And in doing so, in praying as we pray, our speech may be gracious. It is seasoned with salt, so it is perfect that we may know that he knows that he provides the answers to all that we speak. And so we count our blessings. We give praise to God and thanks to him, for we know his love, his grace, lasts forever. And so Paul says, be persistent, pray every day, never give up, never stop, don't quit. Be, be perceptive, pray about every situation and every circumstance, good or bad, mountaintop or valley, and be praiseful, giving thanks to God for everything, for God is good. His grace is sufficient for all. And so if we take these steps, my friends, our lives will be transformed. We will grow in God's amazing grace. And while it may not change our circumstances immediately, I guarantee you it will change you. It will change each of us. And so may we not only share our faith in Christ, but may we share our prayer life as well. God is listening for that great conversation from you. God is listening for your voice. I want to invite you, friends, to stand as you are able as we sing hymn 771, Great is Thy Faithfulness, verse 1.
be seated. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we now offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O God. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O God. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make up strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all those who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, and comfort to those who are grieving and recovery to those who are ill, especially Brenda, Sue, the Sweetford family, Lee, Doris, Tim, Phil, and Esther. Hear us, O God. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Hear us, O God. You lead us home, O God. We give thanks for all those who have died and now citizens with the saints. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now we pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us. And be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, number 780.
And so, my friends, go in peace and serve our Lord.